welcome everyone. So I know that people will be joining as we go. I've also published this in all of our locations. Great to see your face, Danielle. Um, Essence, can't wait to go on this journey with you. For those that are watching um, in the replay, we are very honored to have Vickal from, and do I pronounce your name right? I always feel like so bad that I'm not, is it Vickal? Yes. Okay, Bacall from Culture Holiday, and he is going to come speak to us about all things Greece, Bali, and South Africa, which are just a few of the destinations that they um, provide amazing service. We personally have gone on a Dubai trip, two trips with them last year and about to go on Bali. So we are excited to have you, Bacall. And with that, I'm going to let you take it away. Uh, thank you so much, Sunday, and really it's an honor for me to be on this call, <clears throat> and I will try my best to answer all your questions and to share all the details, minute details, whatever I can with you for all the destinations. Still, if I miss something, please do let me know, and I'll uh, come back to you on those details then. So uh, allow me to share the screen, and I'll start with the uh, Greece presentation, and then we go from there. Sounds good. You should have the rights to be able to share. Do you have it? On the bottom? Yes, I have it. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So I believe everyone can see my screen over here? Yep, we sure can. Yeah. Thank you. So here we see a very beautiful picture from the Greece with the Greece flag. And uh, we go further. So where is Greece located? So it is located in the Southeast Europe and uh, on the crossroads of Europe with Asia and Africa. And uh, it occupies the southernmost tip of the Balkan Peninsula, which is mainland, extending into the Mediterranean Sea. So you can see the picture and the map over here. You can see where the Greece is actually. And it shares borders with Albania, North Macedonia, Bulgaria, and Turkey. And the territorial water also uh, encompasses into numerous islands in the Aegean and the Ionian Sea including the famous ones like the Crete Roads and Santorini. Something about Greece here. Uh, when, you, when you think of Greece, when you say word Greece, what comes in your mind? Like For me, the beautiful domes, new domes and uh, <clears throat> flying dresses, it comes into my mind, some nice beaches. So it is also considered as a cradle of Western civilization. And it is the birthplace of the democracy, Olympic Games, historiography, political science, and a lot of other things. Philosophy, literature, scientific and mathematical principles, and Western drama. So this is all about uh, very famous in Greece. It's known for its history and islands. There are a lot of islands in, his, uh, in Greece. The major ones are the uh, Mykonos, Santorini, and Heraklion, Crete, Thessaloniki, Petras, these are the few of the major islands. And uh, the country is a member of the European Union. Athens, which is also called as the mainland, has rugged mountains, forests, and lakes. But the country is also known for the islands. So here you can see the map of Greece again. You can see where is Athens. This is Athens over here. And then to the left, to the right is Mykonos, and then further down is Naxos. Then we have Santorini, then again, Crete, and then these are all the islands over here. And here is roads also. So you can see the roads also. So these are the major islands which when people they uh, travel to Greece, they try to cover uh, these islands depending upon the time, duration, what they have. So you can see here, why should we visit Greece? We should be visiting Greece for uh, the remarkable history, stunning beaches, perfect weather, superb nightlife, mouth-watering food and drinks, the islands, and the archaeological sites, and there's a lot of other things also. This is uh, uh, information about when we travel to Greece. Your passport should be valid for more than six months after uh, the date of travel. That is for sure. Visa is actually not required for the US citizens uh, if they are traveling for less than 90 days. 
ट्रेवल इंश्योरेंस इज हाईली रिकमेंडेड एंड द लैंग्वेज इज ग्रीक एंड इंग्लिश सो टू सो एवर यू विल एनकाउंटर दे विल स्पीक द लैंग्वेज इंग्लिश सो देर वोट बी एनी इश्यू इन कम्युनिकेटिंग विद द पीपल this is the time difference between the greece and the us so we have like it's uh, 7 hours ahead of uh, the est time in us 8 hours of cst and 9 hours of mst and then 10 hours of pst so this is the time difference between the us and the greece something about greece culture it is a, a vibrant tapestry woven from a rich history and uh, you can see here it is celebrated worldwide for its contribution to art philosophy democracy and literature from ancient times greek civilization flourished with iconic achievements such as the parthenon in athens the birthplace of democracy and the works of philosophers like socrates plato and aristotle and greek hospitality known as Philoxenia or warmly welcomes visitors to experience its timeless traditions and enduring spirits. So this is all about culture. Then Greek religion is also very ancient and was polytheistic, meaning they worshipped many gods and goddesses who were believed to control various aspects of life. The most important gods and goddesses include you can see all the names here: here Zeus, Hera, Poseidon, Athena, Apollo, Artemis. Aphrodite and Hades. These are the images of the Greek gods. And this is a Greek myth. The Trojan War, a significant Greek myth, revolves around the Greeks and the Trojans. involving epic battles in the trojan horse the story highlights heroism betrayal and the consequences of war making it an enduring and influential greek myth oh no mm -mm. hello i think somebody then uh, we have some information about the festivals of greece easter <coughs> it is an it is a significant religious event in greece and orthodox christian community is worldwide It, so i hope you already know about that easter easter is celebrated with fervor and tradition with midnight church services on holy saturday where the resurrection is announced and candles lit symbolizing christ's triumph over death then they have athens apidoros festival it is a annual cultural event in greece it is showcasing a variety of performances in the theater music dance and primarily in athens and apidoros it features both in greek and international artists blending ancient greek tragedies modern plays classical music concerts and contemporary dance performances then they have one more that is thessaloniki film festival you can see the picture also here then anniversary of greek resistance hope day it is celebrated uh, on october the 28th so a lot of people ask when is the best time to travel to greece so though greece has a lot of sunny days but still uh, we say from april, mid april to mid october is a good time to travel to greece It has a typical Mediterranean climate with summers that are usually hot and dry, and the winters can be quite cold and wet. The country is mostly sunny throughout the year. The northern part of the country can be very cold during the winters, even receiving snow in some areas. So you can see the uh, the picture over here. The temperature given here is in uh, Celsius. and how to travel to greece what are the uh, flights from uh, usa to travel to greece and what is the airport code so we have everything mentioned here 
there are two main and busiest airports in Greece, which are in Athens city and Thessaloniki city. And the Athens airport is actually uh, is more considered while traveling to Greece. So you see Athens airport, the airport code is ATH. Then the flights are like uh, uh, Delta, American Airlines, British, United, Air Berlin and a few of other more. I believe you can see the airport codes over here, Athens, Mykonos and Santorini. Can you? Yep. Okay, thank you. Are these direct flights? Yeah. Say it again, please. You said that. These I are the flights. They're direct yeah. flights. Yeah. Not the direct ones, but yeah, they are all operating uh, in Athens. <laughs> a lot of people, they wanted to travel to Santorini only, but they still um, have to travel through Athens through a connecting flight. You can see the map here. Flights coming out from Los Angeles, Houston, Chicago, New York, and there are a few other airports also. When you travel to Greece, what are the other uh, transports in Greece, like plane is one of them, then you can have Greek ferries when you travel from one island to another, like you are doing the island hopping. So Greek ferries are there. While you are traveling within a city, there are car rentals. Train are also there from uh, train routes in Greece is from Athens to Thessaloniki. The northern and central Greece is also well served by the railway. the box. We have the buses also, the KTL buses, and the taxis again. So the ferries are the most renowned transport uh, to commute between the islands. And they have two types of ferries, uh, high-speed ferries and the slow ferries. High-speed ferries, they actually uh, travel fast and uh, slow ferries are actually large vessels with more relaxed pace and more amenities on board, such as restaurant lounges and outdoor decks for scenic views. Whereas in fast ferries, you don't have these things. This is a, a, a tentative duration of travel between the islands, like from Athens to Mykonos, if you travel. A uh, high-speed ferry may take around three and a half hours, whereas uh, Slow ferry may take up to five and a half hours. Then again, from Mykonos to Santorini, it may take around two to two and a half hours, whereas a uh, slow ferry may take four to five hours. Santorini to Athens is uh, four and a half hours to five and a half hours. But if it is, if it is a slow ferry, it may take a little more. Then there are some other islands like Rhodes and uh, Crete also. So they have uh, the ferry transport between those islands also. Coming on to the, uh, the food in Greece, so you can see the very beautiful pictures of the del very delicious food over here. Soup lucky. Grilled squares of seasoned meat served with pita bread and zetziki sauce. Then they have feta cheese, which is iconic Greek cheese, often served in salads or baked dishes. Then they have spanakopita, which is a flaky filo pastry filled with spinach and feta cheese. It is a delightful appetizer, or you can consider it as a snack also. Then baklava, everyone knows about the baklava. It is a very, uh, a, a dessert, very famous in uh, a lot of other countries also. Then uh, what are the major Greek islands you should be visiting while you are traveling to Greece? As I already told you in the beginning, we have Athens, Mykonos, Santorini, Crete and Rhodes. So you can see Athens, if you are a, a person who are who is more inclined toward the philosophy, democracy, and want to know about the ancient things, you can travel to Athens. 
Mykonos is for like the vibrant nightlife and uh, charming whitewashed buildings. Then we have Santorini, a stunning Greek island known for its breathtaking sunsets, view dome churches, and dramatic cliffside views. Then we have Crete, again, the largest island, rich in history, mythology, and natural beauty. Rhodes is another Greek island, ancient ruins, medieval architecture, steeped in history and charm. So this is a, a compilation of what you can do while, while you are in there. You can explore ancient ruins. You can relax on the stunning beaches. You can discover charming islands, immerse in the history and world culture, and sail on the seas. A small video of Athens. So this is Athens. You can see a picture of the Acropolis Hill with Parthenon. Once again, uh, it's the capital of Greece and uh, boasts a storied history that spans over 3,400 years. The city's legacy includes iconic landmarks such as Acropolis, Parthenon, and Agora reflecting its profound influence on the Western civilization. Do you know that Athens took its name from the goddess Athena? The city, the capital city of Greece, derives its name from the Athena, the goddess of wisdom, courage, and strategic warfare in Greek mythology. Then we have Delphi as a popular uh, location to see while they are in Athens. Then we have this picture when you go to Greece, you can see this picture there. Bromis, it is also called the runner, is made of individual pieces of glass stacked atop each other to take that blurred shape of a runner in motion. The Acropolis Museum. This is one of the top attractions in Athens. The Parthenon. Stadium, Archaeological Museum. The Acropolis Museum is different and the Archaeological Museum is different. Actually, Athens has a lot of museums. These are some of the interesting facts of Athens. And even they have the uh, the dinner in the sky also in Athens. Other than that, uh, the the places which I told you in this presentation, they have the Cape Sunium, which is a temple of Poseidon, and it's like uh, two hours drive from Athens. Then uh, Mount Lycabetus, Sintigma Square is a famous square then uh, central market and you can actually wander through plaka also plaka area is a very nice area where they have a lot of uh, restaurants and all other things nice place to walk around it's near the acropolis hill
Is this in Athens? The call. That was Mykonos. So, Mykonos is a picturesque Greek island known for its pristine beaches, charming whitewashed buildings with blue accents and vibrant nightlife. If you are a party person, if you want to celebrate, you can travel to Mykonos. So, are you someone who enjoys celebrations? Yes, Mykonos is for you. These are the attractions in Mykonos, Little Venice, the windmill of uh, Mykonos. Mykonos town is also the capital of uh, Mykonos Island. Then they have Delos Island, which is a small Greek island near Mykonos. These are the interesting facts about uh, the Mykonos. It, is ha it has a cosmopolitan atmosphere. Panagia, Paraportiani, Petros the Pelican, Super Paradise Beach. It is known for its lively beach parties and Metoyani Street, then Petra Tour Bumi. These are the facts. So, what you can do while you are there, you can actually see the Mykonos town and Delos and explore the popular beaches. If you are uh, an, uh, interested in water sports, you can enjoy water sports here also. And definitely the nightlife. Moving on to the next one. A small video on Santorini. Mm -hmm. So that was Santorini, and uh, Santorini is uh, one of the very beautiful places in Greece. Beauty is beyond words. It is renowned for its breathtaking views of the characterized by what whitewashed buildings. The blue domes, what you see, actually they are all churches. They are not the houses, but they are all churches. The blue domes. The island's iconic Blue Dome Church is stunning sunsets in Ia. O-I-A is pronounced as Ia, not Oia, rather Ia. And the volcanic landscapes create a mesmerizing backdrop. Pictures of uh, the Ia village, the Fira town. These are the attractions in uh, Santorini. Acrotree archaeological site. Red beach, they have red uh, beach, black beach, white beach in Santorini. You can see all these colors of the beaches. These are the uh, facts of the uh, Santorini, volcanic origin, and then caldera, architecture, sunsets, and film location. Yes, a lot of films have been, have been shot in the Santorini. The most famous activity of Santorini, a lot of people when they travel to uh, Santorini, they prefer to have the flying dress photo shoot while they are there. Then Santorini's winery too is also very famous. So these are the things you can do in Santorini. Moving on to one more. <clears throat> that was great. And it is the largest Greek island. 
a treasure trove of diverse landscapes from rugged mountains and fertile valleys to beautiful beaches and ancient ruins. What are the top attractions in Great? Uh, you can see the Nos Palace. It is located near Heraklion. It is the largest Bronze Age archaeological site on Crete. Then they have Samaria Gorge, Balos Lagoon, Hania Old Town. Very beautiful. Hania is very beautiful. These are the facts, interesting facts. Longevity. Crete is also known for its longevity among its residents, attributed in part to the traditional Cretan diet, which emphasizes olive oil, vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and moderate amounts of dairy, fish, and wine. What you can do? You can hike the Samaria Gorge, you can uh, explore the ancient sites, enjoy the beach activities, and a lot of other things. So we have one more, last one. Okay. It is a captivating Greek island in the uh, in Greece, and uh, it boasts impressive ancient ruins such as the Acropolis of Lindos and the medieval old town of Rhodes. It is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Colossus of Rhodes, the international festival in Gros is an actually an annual cultural event. Showcasing music, dance, theater, and art. These are the top attractions. These are the interesting facts, cultural crossroads, windows, acropolis, archaeological treasures, modern tourism, local cuisine, and mythological connections. So same, you can check all these things while you're there in Rhodes. Then Corfu, another Greek island. It is renowned for its uh, captivating old town. Altogether, Greece, wherever you travel in any of those islands, actually every island is a beautiful island in its own. So these are a bit, uh, some of the things that uh, when while you are there, you can actually explore ancient sites, indulge in the Greek cuisine, experience island life, learn Greek phrases, and utilize public transportation. Don't overdress for the beach. Don't forget sun protection. Do not ignore local customs. Be cautious of the pickpocketers, and don't underestimate the weather changes. So this is a, just a quick information about the accommodations, what Greece has to offer. Uh, Athens Marriott Hotel in Athens, Polis Grand Hotel in Athens, Wyndham Grand Hotel in Athens. Then the Mykonos has Petinos, Royal Myconian, Harmony Boutique Hotel. These are just to name a few of the hotels. Other than that, there are plenty of other hotels also. Then uh, Santorini Palace in Santorini, Orama Hotel and Spa in Santorini, Splendor Resort in Santorini, El Greco Resort Hotel in Santorini, so this was all about the uh, Greece presentation.
And if you have any questions, you can ask me now for the geese, and then we can go further for the next presentation for the Bali one. Sunday, you have any questions? No, this was great. I think you, I, I'm, I'm sold on Mekonis. Thank you so much. So just allow me a moment and let me open my uh, body presentation. Okay. I, I actually, I do while you're opening up Bali. So, you know, normally when looking at Greece, it's usually a multiple island um, itinerary that you do. What kind of itinerary combinations do you recommend? Okay, so uh, when we are doing the Greece itinerary for multiple days, we are actually like using the Athens uh, uh, Marriott Hotel and then the Wyndham Grand Hotel. And uh, in Mykonos, we are using the Paula's Boutique, which was not listed here actually. And in Santorini, we are using Santorini Palace, El Greco also. We have multiple itineraries for Greece uh, featuring different islands. And then we have different hotels in most of the itineraries. I mean, every itinerary may not hold the same hotel. Yeah. But we, our famous trip, which is a glorious Greece trip, which is six nights, uh, two nights in Athens, two nights in Mykonos, and two nights in Santorini. So this is the first night you arrive in Athens. And then actually this itinerary does not include any excursions. It is all about the accommodations, the transfers, and transfers uh, by ferries to different islands. So the first day you arrive, you are transferred to the hotel. Second day, you have a free day. Third day, early morning, you are transferred to the port for the ferry to Mykonos. And you arrive in Mykonos, you are free for your day. You can explore on your own. Then fourth day again is a free day. Fifth day, we transfer you to Santorini. Sixth day, you explore Santorini. And seventh day, we transfer you at the airport in Santorini for your flight to Athens and then have a connecting flight from Athens to US. All of our itineraries actually can have pre and post nights also if you want to extend the tour. And uh, we have then discovered the Greek island. We have uh, other uh, marvelous Greece, spectacular Greece itineraries also where we are using different hotels and different itineraries. So I would say if uh, everyone is a travel agent here, they can actually, if they are registered with Culture Holiday, they can actually go and check the itineraries on the website under the Greece. And if there is any uh, confusion question regarding any of the itineraries, we are always there to assist you. Lovely. So I assume that the one that you said is probably the most popular one, if you've never been to Greece, is to do that first one, which is uh, Athens, Baconis, and Santorini. Yeah, that is the most popular one. That's a six night. It starts in Athens and ends in Santorini. Got it. Okay. Yeah. And we can, as I told you, you can not only add the, itiner, the additional days, but you can actually add the optional tours also. If you are interested in uh, exploring anything, you can... Let us know which one do you want, and we can add that to it. Perfect. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions about Greece before we move to Bali? No? Hello. Hello. Hi, good evening. This is Sugar. Um, I did have a quick question about the ferries. Um, can you just explain, like, the, the price difference between the, the slow and the... And the, and the fast ferry? Okay, so uh, Sugar, uh, we normally provide the, the fast ferries uh, between the islands where it is necessary. Like from, from Athens to Mykonos, we provide a fast ferry. From Mykonos to Santorini, it's a traditional ferry. And from uh, Santorini to Athens, we don't provide a ferry. We rather we recommend having a flight from Santorini to Athens. Uh, reason being, it's a long distance. And if you have a connecting flight or something, in that case, flight is almost like 40, 45 minutes and it's uh, very uh, economical, maybe around uh, 60, 70 US dollars something. So, yeah, Athens to Mykonos fast and Mykonos to Santorini conventional ferry. 
we do not consider the price uh, between uh, these two types of ferry. We provide the, the comfortable uh, transport, what is required at that moment. Awesome. Am I able to explain you, Sugar? Yes, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Pony has raised her hand. And does Pony have any question? Honey? Yes, I have a question. Hi, everyone. Um, so, hey, so when you're doing the say Santorini is the last one from Athens to Mykonos to Santorini. So when you're traveling with your luggage, like, do we do the do we have to pay like a surcharge for for um, transporting the luggage by ferry to Santorini? No, uh, when you travel by ferry, there is no extra surcharge. You take your luggage in the ferry and there's a, a place for keeping your luggage according to your island. Suppose uh, the ferry to uh, Mykonos from Athens may stop in some other islands also on the way. So, <clears throat> yeah, you have a separate place for tra people traveling straight to Mykonos. They will keep their bags over there. There's no extra surcharge. charge. Okay, and there's no limit on the bags as well, correct? There's no limit on the bag, but still, uh, we always recommend traveling light. Yes. And your okay. airline also only allows, I think, two uh, chicken bags and one carry-on, right? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, Connie. And uh, moving on to the Bali. <clears throat> So you can see a very beautiful picture of two Balinese girls and uh, with the traditional dance. Is Bali a paradise? So yes, Bali is called a paradise and uh, during your lifetime you can see the paradise. You don't have to die to see the paradise, but you can see it while you are here. It may mean different things for different people, yet the term paradise often gets mentioned together with Bali. With certainty, we can say there is no other place like Bali in this world. It's a magical blend of culture, people, nature, activities, weather, culinary delights, nightlife, and beautiful accommodation. It is rated as one of the best travel destinations in the world by countless websites, review portals, and travel magazines each year. <clears throat> The aptly name is the island of gods and paradise due to the picture-perfect scenery that Bali has to offer. There is some kind of wonderland for everyone, from world-famous surf spots surrounded by laid-back beach bars to impressive waterfalls to luscious paddy fields. <clears throat> so you can see where it is located. It is in Indonesia and uh, near to Singapore, Malaysia, all these places. Indonesia only land borders are with Malaysia, Papua, New Guinea, and East Timor. You can connect by a few other tourist destinations like Thailand, Singapore, and Malaysia also. These are the flights which are flying, uh, not direct, but from the US, United Airlines, KLM, Asiana, Japan, Turkish Airlines, American, Virgin, Korean and Qatar. There are other also like the Singapore Airlines. What is the best time to visit uh, Bali? I would say any time you go uh, in the year, it is good. It is a good time. And uh, though it is mentioned here that it is uh, best is between April to October, it is the dry season. But nowadays, the weather is unpredictable and uh, Earlier, they had a rainy season from November onwards till February, but now that is also not very much uh, rain in these during these days. So you can travel any time of the year. What are the formalities when you travel to uh, Bali? So visa is on arrival, and you have to pay a fee of thirty-five dollars, and uh, 
when you arrive at the Bali airport, you can go to the immigration. First, you pay the and the visa fee, and you can pay in dollars, you can pay in the local currency, or you can pay by the card also. So all the options are available. And uh, once you have paid the visa fee, then you will uh, move on to the immigration counter where they will stamp your passport. The currency is Indonesian rupiah, which is approximately 14,000, or you can say 15,000, Indonesian rupiah for one dollar. So you can change the currency at the airport if you wish, or you can change it at the hotel or in the market also. In the market, you may get good conversion rate. At the hotel and the airport, you may not get a good conversion rate. So we recommend if you want to use some of the money, then you can change a small amount of money at the airport. And then later on, you can change it in the market. Language uh, is again uh, like the local language, which is Balinese, and everyone else will speak English, whosoever you will meet, whether it's a guide, a driver, or a, a hotelier, or a restaurant person, everyone will speak your language. So there is no barrier in communicating. You can wear whatever you are comfortable in. Only when you go to the temples, that time you should be uh, covered with the, like most of the temples, they will provide you a, a cloth which you have to wrap around your waist, and then you are good to go into the temple. The picture you see here, uh, the lady which is having a blue cloth, which is tied on her waist, actually provided by the temple. You see a beautiful picture of a nest swing over here. Uh, there are a lot of things to do in Bali when you are traveling to Bali. Same, the traditional food, it is very delicious and uh, you can have Balinese cooking classes also to learn how they cook, what they cook and uh, how to cook. So these are a few of the famous places while you are there in Bali, Akinta Mini. It is a favorite destination and uh, you can uh, hike in the morning, you can go uh, to the Mount Batur. You can see a, a, a mountain here. It's actually a volcano and it's called as Mount Batur. These are the small villages of uh, one of the islands and uh, <clears throat> unexplored by a lot of people. Very beautiful. Another island, Nusa Panida which is an offshore island and uh, it takes around 40 minutes by speedboat. It is also a home to a bird sanctuary, uncrowded white sand beaches, sacred temples and Bali's best diving sites. Then they have Obud and Mount Batu. Obud is a, a area like Bali has a lot of other areas named as Nusa, Dua, Obud, Kuta. So these are the areas and Obud is one of those areas which has a, a different theme. It's all like the jungle theme and the famous monkey forest is also located in Obud. All the rice terraces you can find in Obud. <laughs> other than that, they have the Uluwatu temple and the Kechak dance. The picture you see here is from the Kechak dance. Uh, it is, uh, it is uh, organized, it happens every evening in a complex, it's a temple complex called the Uluwatu temple. Then you can see the sunset at the Tana Lot temple. Bali is all about the temples. Like the Greece is all about museums and archaeological sites. Bali is all about the temples. Then they have the monkey forest. One of the most popular things to do in Obud, the most friendliest monkeys. Still, we call, still, we said uh, to be a little away, uh, I mean, keep a distance from the monkeys. Then, this is uh, the Tanalot temple, we can see on the top. And then, this is another temple, Olundanu. This is also a temple, Tirtha Ganga. This is a very famous temple and people do the, the purification ceremony in this temple.
and then we have gates of heaven whenever you see a bali picture the first picture you see is this one the second one which is the gates of heaven it is also actually a temple and it is called the lampuang temple to travel to this place you have to start early in the morning maybe at 5 o'clock in the morning and then you drive for almost 2 hours and then once you reach at this place there is a big queue to take pictures at this place so then we have to wait in that queue it may be like 1 hour 2 hours and then you take pictures and then we see some other sites and drive back to the hotel andara gate taken waterfall people who are interested in uh, snorkeling it's a good place to go for diving and all that and all these water activities very important thing like uh, the spa bali is all famous for its balinese spa and massage treatments <clears throat> it is said to be the chill pill nation because the destination has so many different kinds of spas every for every type of traveler you can choose from a variety of spas for the group for your or just for yourself another very famous activity bali swimming so these are the different things what i just told you to you can do in bali you can actually uh, do the atv rides also on the uh, off roads and kayaking snorkeling cycling and you can actually climb the volcano also again uh, you can light up your life in the night in bali and there is a specific place for that that is the puta area where they have a lot of clubs and all these things where you can actually enjoy the night life you can explore the wildlife not the wildlife you can say actually the the elephant sanctuary where you can wash the elephants you can feed the elephant you can ride the elephant it it can all be done in the elephant sanctuary once again about the food here so what bali has to offer in terms of accommodations uh, we are using this hotel asthala it's a five star property and uh, we are using it for most of our itineraries in obod like this is uh, located in obod area which i told you is like the jungle theme area so people traveling to bali if they are staying in obod area we are putting them over here at this hotel in the asthala resort then this hotel grand hyatt is located in a different area it's in nusa dua this hotel w is in samia another area then the anvaya beach resort this is also on the beach we are using this a lot in uh, in our itineraries so the our fa very famous itinerary that is the fascinating bali we are using two nights in uh, obud in uh, isthala resort and then three nights in the anvaya beach resorts in kota so this was uh, about the bali information and uh, if you have any questions regarding the bali you can let me know any questions for bali um is bali lgbtq safe you said bal is bali safe is bali safe for the lgbtq society yes it's safe to travel and uh, yeah the lgbtq travel can they can also travel to bali that's not a problem okay thank you 
Good evening. Are we able to customize um, um, our own itinerary? Like yes, if... Okay. Yes, Patricia. Yeah, you can actually let us know. You can actually reach out to us and let us know about your uh, requirements. Uh, I have not shared any itinerary with you, and it is you can actually uh, tell us the travel dates. You can actually tell us the number of people, and if they have any specific interest in any of the hotels or any activity they are looking for your guest, you can do let us know, and we can actually work out and uh, share that with you. Perfect. And you're, I've seen a few of your accommodations. Are some of those, um, well, are any of those uh, where they can have like their own um, private pool? I know I just seen, I seen a photo of one. Is that like the in hotels pool or is there like a private pool for each? Do you have any rooms or villas that have private pools? Okay, yes. So uh, Bali has a, a lot of accommodation, a lot of different types uh, types of accommodation. The one which I showed you, uh, uh, the uh, Anvaya, it has actually a room category where you have the uh, uh, access to the pool outside from your room only. You have to just open the uh, window and you can be in the pool. But it's not a private; it's a lagoon for a uh, and every there are like around twenty five rooms of such category. And it is accessible by all the 25 rooms. It's a very big pool. Uh, but uh, there are other hotels also which can offer room with a private pool also. Okay. Yeah. That's if you mention if you mention this in your requirement that you want a room with a private pool, we can actually work out and mention uh, the hotel name. What has, I mean, the one which will have a room with the private pool. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you, Natasha. Any other questions for Bali? So again, same thing, like your passport should be valid for more than six months after your date of travel to Bali. And visa is required, but you can get it on arrival at the Bali airport. And you have to pay a small amount of $35. You can bring some small changes for the visa fee and other things. And since I told you the, the currencies were like 15,000, their local rupee for $1. So you can actually pay by cards and by local currency also. If you want to change, you can change it at the airport. So you need a visa for Bali too? You need a visa for Bali. And you can get visa when you arrive at the airport. You don't have to apply before but okay. if there is anyone who is not an u.s citizen in that case you may require to apply beforehand before you travel to bali okay are you able to select other accommodations if you have one in mind or you have to stay yes, with the can, ones that yeah yeah I, yeah I just told that uh, if if you are interested in any specific hotel just let us know which hotel you are interested in okay Okay, I think we can go to South Africa. Yeah, so. We just went all around the world. Allow me to share the screen and. So you can see the picture here from South Africa.
Yes. Yes, we can see it. Yeah. So here you can see the map where it is located. Or South Africa, it is on the southern tip of Africa. And it's known for its diverse landscapes, vibrant cultures, and rich history. Most are bland with modern cities, Johannesburg and Cape Town. A lot of people traveling either to Cape Town or Johannesburg, but we have an itinerary where you can actually travel to Johannesburg and Cape Town both. So again, the information about uh, the passport, same six months validity is required after the date of travel. And uh, visa is not required for the US citizens who are traveling for less than 90 days. But if you are staying, if you intend to stay longer, you, you would definitely require a visa. And these are a few of the major international airports while you are there in uh, uh, South Africa. When you're flying to South Africa, if you're flying to uh, Cape Town or Johannesburg, depending. These are a few of the popular airlines, South African Airways, Delta, United Airlines. And direct flight from USA typically range like from 14 to 18 hours, depending upon the departure city and the route taken. These are some of the travel tips, awareness of the surroundings, driving and transportation, currency and seasonal considerations. So what you should be doing when you are there in South Africa, you can ex explore the local cuisine. Sun is smart. Sun, South Africa has a sunny climate. Protect yourself from sunburn by wearing sunscreen, a hat, sunglasses, when you are especially doing the outdoor activities. Choose tours, uh, tour operators and accommodation that practice responsible tourism. Enjoy nature safely, whether it is hiking or visiting wildlife reserves follow the rules and safe distance from animals. What you should not be doing, don't support wildlife exploitation, don't ignore health precautions and don't display value idols. These are the best foods when what you can try. South Africa's culture is a vibrant uh, tapestry of diverse influences shaped by its history, geography, and the people. It is also known as a rainbow nation due to its multicultural society, encompassing various ethnicities, languages, and traditions. South Africa is known for its religious diversity with freedom of religion enshrined in its constitution. Major religions which are practiced include the Christianity, Islam, Hinduism, Buddhism, and Judaism. Christianity is the largest religion. So what to see and what are the attractions? Cape Town. You can see the beautiful picture from Cape Town. You can visit the Robin Island. It's a UNESCO World Heritage Site where Nelson Mandela and other political prisoners were incarcerated during apartheid. Tours include a visit to the prison and insight into South Africa's struggle for freedom. The other one is Cape Winelands, short drive from Cape Town. Table Mountain, Cape Peninsula,
Cape Point and Cape of Good Hope, Botanical Gardens, Six Museums, Chapman's Peak, and a Township Tour. These are the other things which you can do in Cape Town. The Kruger National Park for the safaris, game drives. You can view the wildlife in the Kruger National Park and it is a home to the array of wildlife including the big five, lion, leopard, elephant, buffalo and the rhino as well as the cheetah, giraffe, zebras, hippos and crocodiles and a numerous species of birds and smaller animals. Scenic drives and lookout points. The park boasts stunning landscapes with varied ecosystems ranging from savannas and grassland to woodlands and rivers. You can rest at the camps and they have the picnic sites, cultural heritage sites. These are the things you can do in Kruger National Park. Game drives, guided bush walks, bird watching. You can visit water holes and lookout points. Then we have Johannesburg. Johannesburg has the Apartheid Museum, the Soweto. Gold Reef City and Nabiong. These are the things you can visit, you can explore while you are there in Johannesburg. Constitution Hill, Nobenang District, Johannesburg Jew, Market Theater, Hot Air Balloon Ride, you can take a Hot Air Balloon Ride. Then they have a garden route. These are the few of the things which you can actually explore while you are in the garden route. National Park, Nesma, Tattenberg Bay, Kango Caves. Into the adventure activities, wildlife encounters, scenic drives, and stuff, and golfing in Garden Road. So, from Cape Town to Johannesburg, the flight duration is approximately two hours. A lot of airlines they operate on this uh, route, on this sector. A lot of flights are available during the day. Johannesburg is the main hub for domestic and international connections in South Africa, making it convenient for travelers to connect to other destinations from here. <clears throat> so if you arrive in Johannesburg, you can e easily take a flight to Cape Town also. From Cape Town to Kruger National Park is a, again, there's a flight, um, there's no direct flight, there's no direct flight from Cape Town to Kruger. Uh, you, can, you have to fly to the nearby uh, Airports. They have a connecting flight to reach Kruger National Park from Cape Town by air. Travelers typically need to connect via Johannesburg or other major hubs such as Nalespruit Airport. If you are on the garden route, then a uh, few of the essential things. Many travelers start their garden route journey from Cape Town, which is a major city with an international airport and abundant attractions. Mm -hmm. And uh, the key places are the Cape Town, Harmanos, Mosin Bay, Nesna, and Nature's Valley.
UNESCO World Heritage Sites in South Africa. So Mangliso Wetland Park. Robin Island. It is one of the very famous uh, spots. Situated near Johannesburg, the cradle of humankind. It is not mandatory that you have to visit all these uh, things because we understand that the duration of travel can be actually different for everyone and not everyone get the same amount of time to travel. So depending upon the time of travel you have, we can actually plan an itinerary for you. So these are the festivals in uh, South Africa. The KF Cape Town International Zest Festival. Oyster Festival. Arts Festival. KKNK is an annual African Arts and Culture Festival in Orshun, South Africa. Kopi It's a music festival, South African music festival. Durban Film Festival. A few of the uh, information about the uh, hotels. I mean, few of the hotels are here. We have Southern Sun Waterfront, which is in Cape Town. Four Star Hotel. Pepper Club Hotel. Cascade Sun City. Sabi River Sun Resort. Hilton, Santum, Johannesburg. So, this was all about the South Africa. And... Uh, Thank you. Like we have other hotels also uh, in uh, Cape Town and Johannesburg. And depending upon uh, for how many nights and days, we can actually work out on those things also. What's the most popular itinerary in South Africa for a first time? Uh, the most popular itinerary is like we are providing four nights in Cape Town and four nights in Johannesburg. While doing the Johannesburg, we are actually uh, doing the Sun City also and the Sovito location also. And in the Cape Town, we are doing the Robin Islands and the Table Mountain and other things. So four nights in Cape Town and four nights in Johannesburg is actually considered a good itinerary where you can actually see all the important things in South Africa. As long as you are not interested in the game drives and other things, but uh, if you are doing the historic things and other uh, something which is uh, fascinates you, like the Sun City is a very good place to stay also. And we are actually including a village, a cultural village that is La City in uh, near the Johannesburg. We can do that also. Do you only do South Africa in those places or do you other places in Africa? Say that again, then, please. Do you only do like South Africa and the other, you know, Cape Town and Johannesburg, or do you do others, other places, other countries in Africa? Yeah, we do other countries in Africa also. And okay. we have a list of countries in Africa, like uh, you mean to say Kenya, Tanzania, Ghana, South Africa. We are doing yeah. all these countries also. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. What do you think in essence? Uh, I want to know what other places they go to. I mean, yeah. I would want to, yeah, I would want to map Kenya, Kenya, people are traveling. If mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are traveling to Kenya, they are very much interested in doing the game drives. Yeah, uh, 
Kehri is asking if we are doing Morocco. Yes, Morocco, Egypt. We are doing uh, these also. So Kenya, a lot of people who are interested in game drives. Ghana also. What does that mean, Connie? Point of no return sites. Do you know what that is? Are there any point of no return sites in Cape Town? Uh, Connie, I have to check on this and uh, I can actually uh, get that and uh, come back to Sunday and she will pass on that information to you. That's slave sites. That's what she's talking about. Oh. Yes, I was trying to get off mute. Yes, thank you. I suspected, but I wasn't sure. I didn't want to assume. All right, ladies and ladies and gents and ladies, any other questions, things that you'd like to go over? Let me just check my list of things. I think you covered it all, McCall. Some of the questions that people pre-asked. I, think... I have one. Yeah, go ahead. So um, for the game drive, for the people that do want to take advantage of it, I remember before when I was looking, there was no flight between Johannesburg and Cape Town. So is that something that you offer or is that something that you all do not continue to offer? So Katie, are you talking about the flights between Cape Town and Johannesburg? Correct. We can assist you. Uh, we do not include it in our itinerary, but we can definitely uh, assist you uh, in getting those flights, yes between Cape Town and Johannesburg. Okay, thank you. I have a quick question, um, but it's not pertaining to the destinations that you mentioned about. Uh, one of them that I was looking at was Spain, Madrid, trying to sell that. And I was wondering, cause I saw it was five days, four nights. Um, do you also offer where the person can look into uh, trying to add an activity or excursion? Because I didn't see yes. that on the website. Yes, Latoya. So okay. in all of our itineraries, you have that flexibility to add pre and post nights and any additional excursion you want to add during your travel to Spain, Madrid, or anywhere else. Okay. And then um, I have one other question. So. If I wanted to do like a family trip next year to one of the destinations, for example, like Dubai, um, would if I have a toddler, he'll be three at the time, then he would pay the guest pricing, correct? Yes. So we have okay. two prices. One is the agent, one is the guest. And if anyone is traveling themselves, then they will pay the agent price. And less of the people who are not agents will pay the guest prices. Okay, I thought so. Okay, uh, thank you so much. Thank you. And Carrie is asking if we are offering pictures or any other things to uh, to assist with selling destinations. Yes, we have uh, uh, that feature on our website. Whatever trips we have loaded on our website, you can actually create flyers for those destinations. Just it is in seconds, maybe 15, 20 seconds, you can create a flyer and you can uh, post it on different social media platforms to promote. If you do not find any such flyer for any of those destinations, you can actually write to us uh, on the email and we can give you a, a customized flyer. We just mentioned your date of travel and the prices you want to put on the flyer, and we will put all the details and send it back to you then. That was a great question. All right. It is late for some of us and very, very early for the call. So any questions or comments? Are you guys excited about planning your own destination, signature destination to any or other destinations? Sounds like Latoya, you've got some other plans for Dubai. 
great, great hosts they are for Dubai. Um, any other questions that you guys want to go over? No, thank you for the training this one day. You are absolutely welcome. Thanks to Vakal so much for uh, waking up so early to do this training for us. So uh, with that, this for those who have our booking for profits, this will be added to our booking at for profits edition so that you can, we didn't go over pricing or anything like that. We go over specifically how to take your supplier price and then create a package um, for maximum profitability that is available inside of our course. So we'll be adding this to that course. If you have any questions about booking for profits and how you maximize and monetize your trips, you can absolutely reach out to me. Michael. Again, as always, thank you for your time. Um, will you be in Bali uh, next month? Am I going to see you there or is someone else going to be there? Sunday, I am really sorry that I won't be there next month, but hopefully maybe I will travel in October and okay. Bali. Yeah, next month I may be in Dubai next two months, Bye, month. August and September. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry that I'll miss you, but I hope to see you in 2020, what, next year, 2025. All yeah, right, ladies. Will see you. All right. Everyone have a great evening and thank you for joining us. I'll send out the replay. Thanks for call. I'll talk to you about getting the presentations as well. Thanks. Have a good night. If you're not a Travel Pro Suite member, simply go to onlinetravelboss.com forward slash TPS. And if you are already a member and you'd like to join our affiliate program, you'll be able to resell Travel Pro Suite and make 30% monthly recurring income. I look forward to working with you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. The time is now for you to simplify how you operate your travel business. Bye for now. If you have any questions and you'd like to join us for open office hours, we're starting right now. Go to sundaygardener.com.